Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to this subject specific webinar from Lund University. Today, we are uh, happy to talk about uh, business economics and management. My name is Johan Gunnarsson, and I uh, work at the Division of External Relations. And I have my colleague with me, Rebecca van der Seen, who is uh, helping us out today with uh, your questions in the Q&A. Um, we have invited representatives from Lund University Faculty of Economics and Management, and I would like uh, for them to introduce themselves. So please, Ola Mattison, would you like to say a few words of introduction? Of course, my name is uh, Ola Mattison. I'm a senior lecturer in business administration. I work at School of Economics since a long time ago. Here I'm involved both in traditional sort of research. I do some teaching and also involved with uh, some practical work when we work with companies in, in, in various types of projects. Uh, at the school here, I'm responsible. I teach strategy and management control broadly. And at the school, I'm, in, I'm a program director for the master's program in management. All right, thank you, Ola. The next on my screen is uh, Joachim Westerlund. Would you like to say a few words, please? Yes, uh, thanks, Johan. Uh, my name is Joachim Westerlund and I'm professor of economics at the Department of Economics here at LUSEM. Um, my research is in econometrics and I, the teaching I have is in, also in econometrics. Uh, I am here in, in my role as, as uh, director of our master program, uh, data analytics and, and business economics, or DABE for short. Very good, thank you very much, Joachim. Now we also have Niklas Andrén with us here today. Thank you, Johan. Yes, my name is Niklas André. I'm uh, also working at the, the Department of Business Administration. My area is uh, primarily corporate finance, and I'm here as responsible for the uh, master program in accounting and finance. Excellent. Accounting and finance. Thank you very much. So Ulla, Joachim and Niklas are all uh, staff members at the University School of Economics and Management. Um, we would like to invite uh, participants in this meeting to ask questions to our uh, to our panelists in the Q&A. The chat is uh, disabled. Uh, we want to use the Q&A for your questions, so please feel free to ask us all your questions there. Rebecca is helping out writing answers, but we want to take some, uh, some of your questions orally as well. But I'd like to get started by asking you, Joachim, actually a little bit about the program uh, in data analytics analytics and business economics. It's a quite a new program. Um, is it very timely? Is it something that's very hot right now in the world of economics, uh, this particular subject with analytics, data analytics? Yeah, there are a lot of <laughs> buzzwords going around. Yeah, so it we just uh, rolled it out first time now this, this fall. Uh, obviously, the process of getting the program started is not, uh, you don't kickstart a program, so this is a very long process. But um, yeah, in the beginning, when, so there was management of the school that, that uh, on their initiative that we started this, uh, it felt as that um, uh, we were kind of light in the game, but then once we have uh, talked more with people in industry and also in, the, in academia, it became kind of clear that that uh, over the years the the qualities of what of what firms and um, institutions want to see in graduates have now crystallized uh, more clearly and and so now is actually a very good time we feel to to launch this because we know much better now than than we did just a few years ago uh, what firms are actually looking at uh, okay. in newly graduates so it's it feels like a a good time to launch the program and this was also reflected in 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 the applicants we had so 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 Dave was the ninth most sought after program all categories in Sweden when when we when we started now this this uh, this spring with her. yeah and it's kind of interesting that you mentioned this because sometimes I look at the application statistics for all of Sweden all Swedish universities and several programs from Lund University School of Economics and Management are actually represented uh, among the top uh, top 10 masters, international master's degree programs. Um, 
Ola, I have a question for you. Uh, you represent the Masters in Management program, uh, the MIM. Now, and this is a business program that has been designed for students who have not previously studied business administration. Can you explain the thinking uh, about that? Yeah, and it's it's simple, easy, and complicated. But it's in very much in many different activities, many different fields of competences. You need to manage things. So if you're an engineer, if you work political science, if you work in biology, if you have uh, we have people within the medical field, and with no matter where you work, you need to manage things. So this is a one-year master's program that you could take after you have a bachelor degree in, in another subject. So the idea here is that you have an idea of what you want to do with your career. You have a specific professional field within which you could work, and then you could add management components. So this program is very much about uh, directed towards you as an individual. How can you grow and how can you develop and what tools could you use to develop yourself and also the context within which you work. And you will practice, it's a practical program in that sense that you will practice management for the whole, for the full year. Right. With an, academic, with an academic foundation to it, of course, but uh, it's, it's much, much about managing things. We have received quite a number of questions in the in the in the Q and A, and you you please, if you are participating today and you have a question that you would like uh, our panelists to answer, please uh, use the Q and A function. I'm going to ask. Uh, I think you, Joachim, of course. Uh, data. Uh, there's a question from Max. Data analytics and business economics is my first choice as a master's program. How competitive is it to get in? Uh, good question. Um, yes. So this. Um... For this for this cohort that it, that is on the program uh, right now, we had I think uh, twelve hundred or so um, applications, and since we are rolling it out, we want to do that slowly to make sure that everything is 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 in place before we uh, um, um, increase the volume. So so we admitted only forty students. So uh, yeah, you can work out the percentage there. Uh, for yourself so so it's it's uh, highly competitive um but it as is our, yeah as are most programs actually at the school yeah. of economics and management or faculty of economics and management you have to be a good student to get in basically and show your qualities uh is can you describe just quickly what what are you looking for in the in a in a in a student who who would like to join this program you are kim yeah so so the program is so, so um Many programs that we have um, in academia, they are um, devised from within. So, so many courses are there because we, as uh, I'm sitting in, at the Department of Economics, is because we, as a subject, we feel that these are courses that are core courses, they should be included, period, regardless of whether they are needed in, in industry or not. But this program uh, here, we've actually put it on its head, and so uh, we have and design the program after the needs of, of, uh, of um, firms in industry. And we have an advisory board that helps us with, with various decisions and design of the program. Um, now, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking for in, in, a, in a successful applicant? How, yes. how, can, how can a student who wants to apply to your program show that they are uh, uh, the right candidate right type of candidate to join and this is actually a question i would like to ask all panelists because it, it's very interesting for audience members to know what what kind of qualities they they need to show to have a chance to be admitted yeah sorry for that was a very long introduction to to, <laughs> to that reply but but uh, so one of the things that that we have together with the advisory board then uh, um uh, decided is that the, the level of the technical level, so to speak. Uh, so, so there is a core to the program that is statistics, um, uh, not classical statistics, but more towards machine learning. And then uh, this is this is the, the basic requirement that we have to to enter the program. So we do not really require students to have a business background or economics background or any specific background. But but the, what we do require is a, is a bachelor degree plus certain credits of statistics and math. 
Okay, thank you. Niklas, uh, would you like to describe the students in your program? Uh, what types of, of people are, are suitable to join? What type of background and qualities do they should they have? Uh, we require pretty much uh, business studies in previous studies. Um, you need at least three semesters of business related subjects in your undergrad studies. And you need a specialization in either uh, corporate finance or uh, accounting, management accounting. Uh, so we're pretty particular about what we are looking for. And right. uh, of course, primarily looking for students with uh, a stronger background in either corporate finance or in accounting, management accounting. Those so are you, right. have, you have to be highly specialized uh, yes. or with a very... Uh, strong, um, I mean, emphasis of business administration courses in your previous uh, studies. Yes. Mm. Ulla, your program is open to many kinds of students, as we mentioned before. Uh, there is a question here from Johanna. Uh, do you have a preference, though? I mean, even if it's open to all kinds of students, theoretically, who do not have uh, studied business administration before, is there a preference towards maybe engineers or social science students or... Uh, can you say anything about that? Say that? We have a preference for the mix of different uh, professional backgrounds in that sense. So we don't want to have homogeneity. We want uh, heterogeneity among, because if you're going to work in real life settings later on, you have to work with different professions and different backgrounds. I think we have 23 nationalities in the program this year out of 59 students. So if there is anything we, we go for, I would say it's, it's uh, heterogeneity and diversity. Uh, if, if I should give a, a device for those who are interested, I would say think a little bit about how you want to use this management uh, component to your career planning. Uh, sometimes we have a feeling that people don't know what to do, so they just think I might as, might, might as well read some management to see if it helps me in any way. And I think it's good to have a better developed thought than that when you start. So when you apply, you can say, well, I want to add management to what, what I already have because it will help me to achieve this or it will help me to take a step in this direction, et cetera. I think that is um, more important that, than, than you have a particular study background. Mm, that's very, you have to have, demonstrate that you have a clear goal with your, with your plan. Yeah, however, however clear it could be when you're a sort of a student in, in, in the middle of your studies, but at least some kind of ambitions, at least some, uh, some strive somewhere. I think it's a good thing to have. Okay, thank you, Ola. Uh, here is a kind of a, a question I could ask uh, anyone of the panelists if you are familiar with the GRE or GMAT aptitude tests. Uh, we do not, any programs in Lund do not actually demand that the applicants have taken these tests, but it, it's quite common in some other countries and even some other universities in Sweden. Could you say, share a few words? Is it important or not important if students have these have taken these tests and they want to show us. Um, do you have anything to say about the GRE or GMAT aptitude tests? It's an open question. <laughs> Niklas, yeah. Um, we do not require it, but uh, well, of course, a strong score on either a GMAT or GRE would certainly help. Uh, it would, to some extent, compensate for lack in other dimensions in the application. But, uh, but it's certainly not, not a requirement. Uh, we don't have too many applicants uh, showing GMAT to DRE scores. So, uh, but we do look at it if, or look at them if the scores are there. And of course, pay attention to them if the scores are good. Right. I think there is a, on your website, the School of Economics and Management, there is actually a page with information for students who have taken the GRE or GMAT test and they want to submit the, the results to, to us. Uh, so that can boost your chances, um, according to Niklas André. Um, here is a pretty interesting and broad question uh, from uh, Iqbal Singh. What makes your program stand out among top leaders like HBS, Wharton, INSEED, LSE and others? How innovative and creative does it get I don't want to apply for a rugged program. I want to flow, flow with the course and make it a creative journey. The program caught my eye and I assume it can be very easy to personalize your program. I think the first part of the question is most 
interesting in my opinion that is how do we compare with other top business schools in our region and around the world is there anything that you could say that makes the faculty of economics and management in Lund university kind of stand out is it the that we are very broad or is it that we are highly specialized uh, do you have any ideas or opinions on that panelists I think that by definition, we do not stand out over those uh, world leading uh, institute, institutions and, and departments. But I would say that it, it depends a little bit on, on what you would like to have. I, I, I would think that if you took a degree at a place uh, like LSE, that obviously would fly well on your CV. <clears throat> But then there's also the, the question of the, the content of the education. And um, here I would say that, that uh, you get a very highly personalized and um, thorough education uh, that I could probably say for, for LUSEM as a whole. Um, and this is one of the, the, the uh, main, this is one of the, the um, top comments we get uh, in the Department of Economics, at least for our programs in finance, economics and, and data analytics, that, that the pace is incredibly high and that the workload is also uh, very high. Uh, so obviously this means that you will have to work for it, but then at the same time, you get a very good education. Um, uh, one might also uh, uh, mention here that, that although uh, this is Lund and not uh, LSE or any European uh, top university. Um, we are still scoring very well in, in, in rankings. Uh, we're triple crown accredited. We're top 75 uh, among European business schools, according to Financial Times. Uh, we're top 100. So I got some statistics for you. Uh, in the world uh, by US News uh, World Report. Um, and so we're not doing all that bad. And for the Department of Economics, we are uh, top three constantly in, in uh, the REPIC ranking of uh, all departments of economics in Sweden. We're top 75 in the world by Shanghai uh, rankings. And we are world champions in econometrics and won the econometric game this year. So it's, since I'm in econometrics, I felt I have to say this. <laughs> so, so we're actually doing quite all right, I would say. Yeah, I think it's interesting. We talk a lot about uh, how important research is because Lund University is a research intensive university. Um, how does that influence the education that we're offering students? Uh, Ulla, would you like to say something about that? My, my answer to the previous question, on top of what Joachim said, would be relevance. And, and I would say that could be related to this one as well, because I would say that we, even though we have a high profile in, in research and are act, active in that field, I would still say that when I meet former graduates from here, when I have a contact and interactions with the companies and public institutions, etc., what they say is that what people know when they leave here is relevant for their future managerial situation and what they should work with in the future. So we, we have theory courses, but I will still say we have a high reputation of actually being relevant in terms of this is actually something you need to know and it's usable. It not, it's not just an academic field of sort of research interest. This is actually something you could use and, and, and need for the future. I think this is also partly reflected in the fact that many of the business programs are one year in length. Uh, so it, they are designed for people who want to take, you know, intensive training in a chosen discipline and then join probably the maybe private sector uh, often uh, for many business graduates. Niklas, uh, your program is one year, if I'm not mistaken. D do most of your graduates want to join the, the private sector or the, is it the public sector or is it NGO? What, what type of careers could we imagine for graduates? I would say primarily the private sector. Uh, that's uh, where we see most students going. Um, internationally, as well as in Sweden, um, we have a lot of students going abroad. And relating back to the previous questions, uh, I don't think uh, students 
graduating from uh, one of our programs would be at any disadvantage relative to uh, graduates from other top ranked schools. Our programs are competing with others at the top. I don't think we should be more humble than that. No, we have a lot true. of a lot of uh, highly qualified applicants and a lot of highly qualified students taking our programs, and they are competitive when they leave. Are there any other differences that you see between a one-year and a two-year program? Um, is it is it true that two-year programs may perhaps be more suitable for students who are interested in research or? Uh, those types of activities, or is there a correlation there? To be honest, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think that's where you find the primary distinction. Uh, I think it's more a question of uh, the profile the school wants and uh, the target audience. If if your ambition is to uh, go to, go for the private sector, I don't think there is that much to gain from taking a two-year program relative to one-year program. Our programs are very intensive, and I think you're, you're, we're squeezing in perhaps more than one year normally would accommodate. Um, but I don't think there's that big a difference when it comes to closeness to research. Okay, and we can perhaps also say that it is, would still be possible for students who would like to join uh, or, or, or embark on a research-oriented career after a one-year master program, right? Certainly, certainly. Yeah. Um, I have a question about the uh, Master of Science in Economics program. I don't know if, if are you, Joachim, willing to take the question? I, I'm yes. not sure you. Shoot, and I'll try to answer this. Uh... Yes. Okay, thank you. So there's Joachim uh, is asking, Joachim, sorry. I'm interested in the Master of Science in Economics program. I have a background in statistics, but I have only obtained 15 ECTS in economics in addition to a master's thesis focused on political economy. The minimum requirement for the master's in economics and learned is 60 ECTS economics, which I do not meet, this uh, student admits. Is this rule entry requirement a hard entry requirement or a more soft and flexible one? Yeah, yeah so this is, uh, this is a hard one. So, so, so those... Um... Formal requirements that are set out. Uh, this is something that is sorted uh, already before the app uh, applications come to us. So, so, um, so we do not. Um, even if in this in economics, statistics is uh, obviously very relevant. Uh, if you do not meet the uh, those formal requirements, uh, we do not see. Um, or rather, if you don't meet the minimum requirements, we do not get to see your application. Right. So this, I think this goes for all programs at Lund University, regardless of uh, subject area. Actually, the, the, the stated entry requirements are uh, non-negotiable, as it were. They're firm. Yeah. Um, so there is a question from Mitzi, uh, who's asking, and this is for you, Ola. I have a background uh, PhD in social anthropology and want to transition to learning and developing uh, management skills. Uh, I am torn between the Masters in Management and the Masters in uh, People, Knowledge and Change. Do you have any advice for how to decide between the two? Uh, was it the degree, was it the PhD degree or was it the Masters? Uh, the Mitzi is, is saying that they uh, have a doctorate in Social Anthropology, so I assume both uh, they have uh, some other... Uh... My, my point was that I think that the managing people knowledge and change is a more research-based program. So I would say it has, has a big extent on, on sort of reading literature, having literature seminars, etc. If you take the Masters in Management program, I would say it's more directed towards you as an individual, where you practice. We have a very strong emphasis on or saying that we want our students to apply a growth mindset, meaning that I will try things I haven't tried before and see it as a learning opportunity to do something else. So I would say you will be more in projects, more in practical managerial work in the Masters of Management program and more of theories and reflections around. So it's a more traditional academic program, I would say is people knowledge and change. So uh, if you have a research background and want to sort of develop in, in that setting, I would say that's an opportunity. If you want to sort of do more practical approaches to things, I would say master's in management is, 
is a more suitable way, I would say, mm. depending on the goals and ambitions and so on. Okay, thank you. Uh, here is a question from Daya, who is asking, um, if, if an applicant has graduated with a bachelor's degree more than 10 years ago, and has since then worked and gained a lot of work experience, uh, will that be considered when I apply to a program? Uh, Niklas, what do you think? Do you consider work experience to be uh, very much relevant among your applicants? It's relevant. I wouldn't say very much relevant, but it is relevant. Uh, we do take it into account. Uh, I would say that uh, grades from undergrad studies weigh more heavily than uh, practical experience, but it's certainly one of the uh, components going into our assessment of an applicant. So it could basically perhaps boost someone's application a little bit, but it, and it certainly can't replace the need for students to show that they have the right academic background anyway. Oh, exactly. So exactly. that is the question we often get. You, you still need the right uh, academic background to join. And I see this question was related to the Master of Accounting and Management, um, Accounting and Control, which is the program I'm heading. Yeah. Um, so my answer is certainly relevant there. Mm. Um, uh, we have a question for you, Joachim. Uh, Abhishansha is asking, how much coding is required for the analytics master program, data analytics and business economics? Uh, yeah, so... so um... There is a coding component in a program, and this is also something that we have. This is has been included um, based on discussions with the advisory board. That uh, this is something that we feel is important. Um, we do not require it uh, on entry, but we do have a kind of a um, pre-study package that that is uh, sent out before before the program start, uh, so that if one wants to, one can. Um, and if one is completely unexperienced with, with coding, one can familiarize oneself uh, a little bit, but there is no formal requirement. Mm. Thank you. Uh, Mitzi is also asking Ola again uh, for the management program. Is there a course or opportunities to learn project management? I am interested in getting PRINCE certification one day. I, I, I do not myself know what PRINCE certification is, but maybe we, you do. Uh, well, we don't have a... a an explicit the project management course. We work with projects, but they are from a managerial point of view. So um, it's it's about you. It's not about these different techniques. So um, we could encourage to do that afterwards, etc. But uh, we don't have any formal components of that in the program. No. Okay. Thank you. Here is a pretty general question, and I'm not sure our panelists are are may. Uh, Explain this. Uh, Bilal is asking, have you guys found a reluctance among Swedish employers to hire international bachelor students? If you don't have a, a reply, you don't have to say anything. It's the, uh, the panelists today are representing master's level program. So it's maybe not the right. Yeah, for the bachelor program, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't know, but, but I, I can say this, that uh, at the mass master level, then, then uh, I would say that there is little or no uh, um, uh, issues like that. Uh, but I wouldn't be able to perhaps, yeah, one can extrapolate to the bachelor's level, but um, at least this is my yeah experience. i think generally speaking we don't in sweden or at learn have many uh, bachelor's level programs that are international to begin with so most of our graduates are actually master's level i mean our uh, uh, non uh, local graduates are master's level so it's kind of a different situation for them yeah we, we have uh, for i uh, could just flick in there that so with our finance program since this is um uh, ranked by um, top 37, I think, by Financial Times. Uh, there is a lot of, uh, they provide some resources. And, and one of those is that we can track um, the, the, the path that, that, that graduated students take. And, and so we know from this program that so, so now um, there are uh, about uh, 30 nationalities uh, within the program. Um, this year they have... I think 120 students or something like this. And we know last year that uh, 80, uh, over 80% 80 got the job after um, 
within three months after graduation. Uh, and, and so uh, uh, presumably, regardless of, of where you come from, you, you manage to, to, um, to find a job uh, quickly. Uh, this does not say where the job were or, uh, or anything like this, but it, it suggests that this is not an issue. Yeah, but I think it's also like you were implying here that perhaps students or graduates shouldn't just limit themselves to looking for a job in Sweden or in Lund or in southern Sweden. I mean, we have the greater Copenhagen area that swallows a lot of our graduates and their and also Europe and the world, basically, the programs are designed to to produce graduates that can work anywhere. Yeah, yes, yeah, so, exactly. So, so I would think that this is also how firms recruit, at least in 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 this area, data analytics area, um, where uh, I uh, we are col collaborating with a number of firms that are. A typical Swedish like Tetra Pak, but I haven't spoken to a single Swede in, within Tetra Pak. Uh, so mm -hmm. all, all of the people there that uh, come from outside. Uh, so so um, yeah. All right. Thanks. Let's move on. Um, a, a relevant Olaf. comment would be that a relevant comment would be that many people taking various courses at business admin or business school also work. And in the public sector, it's somewhat more difficult to work if you know the Swedish. So I would say it's not so important if you're Swedish or Swede or not, but those who have learned Swedish have been very easy, have got job very quickly to stay in Sweden, both a master's level and a bachelor's level, I would say. So if you are in public context where the official language is Swedish, yeah. you, you need to know the language. I would say that's a bigger barrier than ethnocentrical, ethnographic background, etc. I would say. Hmm. Okay. Um, for international students, are internships allowed during the school term, or is it offered or possible at all? I, I mean, your programs are quite intense, uh, one-year programs. Is there time for students to do internship during that period? No, no I, I, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. I, I would say that you, you would not have the time for that. Uh, that being said, there are uh, there are opportunities um, that that are offered um, uh, where you can apply for an internship. This is not organized by the school, uh, but there are various initiatives um, with with the students, student unions, and so on. That so, if one one is really eager, summer internship is, is obviously a possibility. Uh, but uh, during uh, the semester, it, I would say it's very difficult to, to squeeze that in. Yeah, uh, I think generally it's more common in, in Learn's uh, two-year master's degree programs to, to fit, to be able to fit this in because they are less intense than the one-year programs. Uh, but can you speak perhaps, Ola, Niklas, uh, if not an internship, is there any type of possibility within the programs to still um contact or learn from industry as it were or the private side do you have guest lecturers or do you do you form uh, do you contact uh, private sector companies to to work with them during the program or how does it work well now do you want to go first i can go for uh we we have um, two, in two weeks, the students at the MIM program should do a live case assignment for a company. So the CEO come here on the Monday and give them an assignment and a task and to help them deal with the challenge. And then they report back like 10 days later. So we have a lot of that type of practical work where you work with cases and applications of various kinds. Sometimes they are sort of represented by us as teachers and sometimes they're presented by guests coming here. Uh, so I would say it's most of the programs are quite influenced by practical situations and applicability, et cetera. And there is also, um, we don't have the sort of space within the programs for doing internships, et cetera. I, I would, not in the programs I've been involved in, but there is an op opportunity of actually adding it on afterwards. So you could get credits for taking this uh, internship sort of course, which is sort of designed that to take as a specific course for doing that type of, of things, but you add it to, to what you already had afterwards. So it's not included in the program, but it's definitely an opportunity we offer from the school. Niklas. I, I agree with what you're saying. Um, 
if we take the programs uh, in business related subjects primarily, there at least we have a lot of interaction in various ways and a lot of focus on applicability. Um, I would say the when it comes to actual uh, integration with the, the public, private sector would, would be the entrepreneurship program that is probably most intensive, but there is interaction with uh, the private sector in, uh, in various ways. Casework, for example, as Ule is suggesting, uh, through the thesis work, through guest lectures. Uh, but this varies both primarily between different courses. Some courses are more intensive in this sense than others, but you certainly see it on all, all programs. Okay, thank you. Uh, Max is asking a little bit about uh, when we assess a candidate, uh, we have something called selection criteria. And sometimes in the selection criteria, we state that grade, we look at the grades of relevant courses when we assess an applicant. <laughs> You're smiling, you, Akim. How, how important are the grades or the GPA for that matter? Uh, if we look at a more, I mean, broader perspective, do you look at the total GPA or the grade point average, or do you look at the grades just on the courses that are relevant for your program when you assess candidates? Um, yeah, I think that that varies a little bit, but um, here uh, we, we look uh, as a primary source of, of information that then we look at we look at grades. So, so that is uh, that is um, obviously important. Um, and also uh, once the uh, the applications has been screened, so, so they so they meet the minimum requirement, then then they come to us, and then, then we also look at if courses are particularly relevant for for uh, if you have taken a, a bachelor in economics, for example, and want to continue with the data analytics program, then uh, perhaps we pay more attention to to courses that are within statistics, econometrics, etc. So so. Um, what about you, Niklas, in your program, uh, do you pay attention to, to grades when you assess candidates? Uh, certainly, that would be uh, the most important, single most important source of information, uh, both overall GPA, uh, but also uh, GPA on well, more specific courses. Uh, in my case, there are two tracks in my program, the corporate finance track, I would focus on uh, courses in finance, finance related subjects, uh, as well as uh, statistics, economics. On the uh, accounting and management control track, the focus would primarily be on uh, courses in accounting, accounting related subjects, um, and uh, law, business law in particular. So we would look at both the overall GPA and the GPA for, for the specific areas, but that certainly weighs in heavily. So Ulla, in your program, where the, where the admission requirement, the entry requirements are more open because you uh, can consider students from many different backgrounds. Do you still pay attention to GPA or grades on specific I, courses? I, I pay attention to the GPA, I would say, um, but uh, the, the, the single uh, subject I focus mostly on is actually English. <laughs> because okay. we have many people who want to come here. If, if I am not convinced that they are, are fluent enough in English, that will be, it, we will sort of have difficult problems to both, both me and the students and such. So I'm very careful to make sure that people prove that they are actually fluent in English. So that is super important. I know what you and Nicholas says, but I, I, for me, it's very important that I know that this works. We cannot stop there because the other stuff is too complicated if you can't manage English. So that is what I'm looking most often at, actually. Would that then be the content of, or how they express themselves in the statement of purpose, the, 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 the letter that you're writing? Sometimes you get help by writing them. So I, I, I love to see these different type of tests and also that there are grades in English, et cetera. It, it gives me some indication. And if I'm, I'm not sure and see that you have good grades, it, it's, it, it, it gives me a better feeling. If I'm not sure and see that I, I can't find any grades and I see that it's sort of weak in some way or that something is missing there, I'm a bit more skeptical. Okay, thank you all. Uh, Linda Knechten has a kind of related uh, question. It, it's also about the student's background. How much uh, attention do we pay to uh, the kind of uh, the reputation or ranking of the home university of the student? Uh, if they come from a quote-unquote elite university in their home country, would that help their application 
or if their home university is not famous, uh, can that be something that is uh, maybe even a bit negative? Uh, do you have an approach here that you would like to share? Perhaps it doesn't. I don't know if um, uh, it is obviously important where the the um, the education comes from uh, because it it also um, says something about the grade. Um, but um, I, I would say that it it it's not as important if um, the, uh, the the bachelor's degree, if you apply for for a master's program, if this comes from a from a top school, uh, but rather it might be. Um, uh, um, um, yeah, it, it might be a, a problem if you come from a school that 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 has a reputation not being that great. <laughs> um, so it, it is probably more like this that uh, um, where say like this. So it's a source of an indication for us that the quality of your of your of your education, if it come from a school. That that we that we are familiar with, or uh, that we can easily find uh, information uh, about, then then that is good. Whereas if it's an obscure school or uh, where we cannot find information, then obviously this is um, not as good. Mm. Niklas and Ola, do you have uh, any thoughts on this subject? No, I agree. Uh, it's certainly an indication, and uh, as Joachim is suggesting, more. On the downside, um, this actually varies somewhat between programs. Uh, certain program directors pay more attention to the uh, to the university where the degree has been issued than others, but uh, it's certainly an, an indication. If if you receive no documents whatsoever in English, it's a little bit. It's it's not a merit. We could say. I, I would say it's 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 not an advantage to apply with things in in something else. If you apply to an English speaking education, I, it is expected that you can bring some documentation in English at least. I would say, but uh, it's just my personal. I don't know what you say, guys, but I would I would say, if... for sure, for sure, yeah. Yeah, it's it's simply. I mean, if people come from universities that are somewhat well known, it's it, it it's. Uh, we can probably assume that the, the quality level is higher in most cases. Uh, and I guess the people who work with admissions, they see the same universities over and over again. So they, they have a, an experience uh, when it comes to these matters to determine. Um, uh, we have a question from Emma directed to Ola. Uh, is it beneficial to have some previous management or leadership experience when applying to the MIM program? Or would you rather have students being completely new to the management uh, subject? I would I would give the Swedish typical answer of logom, you know, <laughs> in the in between. I would say it's good if you have some experience to know what it is. But I, I I don't think if you have twenty years experience of running a hotel, I don't think this program is good for you because then we mostly meet people with only half a year or a year of experience. But if you're acquainted with the topic and have tried and tested things, you have a lot of things going on in your mind where you want tools, which is good. You have a lot of challenges to, to, to bring to school and say, we have to help, you need to help me with this and this, which is great. But if you have an extensive experience, this might not be the best program for you. So I would say log on. A year or so is fine, two maybe as well. 15 is too much. Okay, thank you. Uh, a more general question from Johanna is when we look at the all the programs at the School of Economics and Management in Lund, uh, how can students boost their chances in a more general uh, way to, to get admitted? I mean, they let's say that they, they fulfill the entry requirements, they have submitted all the documents that we want them to send in, but what makes a candidate, you know, stand out a bit? Uh, what can you say? Uh, in that regard, uh, you are What makes a, an ap application pop for you? Where you say, "Ah, this is the person. He or she is perfect for my program." Uh, yeah. So, so this is, um, uh, yeah, this is a good question. Um, uh, as we said before, so, so the grades are are most important. Um, especially in, in programs where uh, there are so many applicants. 
here uh, we're kind of spoiled for choice and, and so grades uh, is the primary source of of information um but uh, again uh, given two two candidates that are um yeah everything else kept constant kind of that then uh, more information is obviously better than less so so whatever um um uh, relevant uh, information there might be so extra curricular activity can suggest uh, ambition and willingness to 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 work for it and so on i would so i would say that uh, all information that is that is relevant for for uh, for getting into to a program is something that that is worthwhile in, in, including in an application when when this is possible what about you, Niklas? So do you have any thing, anything specific you really look for that makes a student really stand out from, from the crowd? And not beyond what we've already mentioned, I would say. Um, first, first thing you look at, and I've been doing the, I do the admissions myself to a large extent. Uh, the first thing I look at is, as Ola suggested before, English. You uh, have to pass the bar on English. And then beyond that, grades generally, as well as specifically in uh, key areas. Uh, then you look at the, the CV to see if there is anything that, as you suggested, pops out. Uh, it could be relevant background. And I would agree, agree with Ola. Not too much, not too little. Uh, doing summer internships perhaps won't say that much. If you've been working a couple of years with them, something that is highly relevant for the program, that may stand out. If you've been working for 15, 20 years, well, that may to some extent send the wrong signals. Beyond that, it should be if there is anything where you deviate noticeably, that could be in the CV, it could be in the statement of purpose. It's very, very difficult to say what that could be. Here we're talking about more of an impression so I, I can't say any specific examples, I, to be honest. Mm. Ulla, do you want to fill in? I agree with the previous speakers here, but I also would like to add, I, I, if I were you, I would try to signal that I'm have, I am willing to work uh, because this requires work. So we don't, this is not a tourist organization. This is a study organization. So we bring people here and to set them into work. So if you could signal that, it's fine. So that I would say, well, it's one thing. I, if you sort of have, can give me the impression that here is some ambitious person who would like to make an effort, then I'm interested uh, to read more about it. And for the second part, I would say, I, I'm always impressed when people tell me that I need this because I want to do something. I have a bachelor in arts, for example. I want to be uh, running, I want to work at the museum. So that's where I need to add a, a management component or I am a, I have studied for, I'm a doctor or a pharmacist. I want to run my own clinic or whatever. I need this as well or whatever it could be. But then it shows me that somebody has thought through and had an idea why I want to do this. And I'm an ambitious person. So then uh, to me, it sounds, this, this is interesting. Mm. That And also, again, the statement of purpose would be the document where you express these uh, ambitions, I suppose. Um, here's a, I'm not sure because we don't have a representative here today from the master's program in, in uh, managing people, knowledge and change, but maybe you would still perhaps be able to answer this. Uh, the, Judith is asking, she has a bachelor's degree in the field of human resource uh, management. Is that suitable or the right fit for the master's in uh, managing people, knowledge and change? Uh, would I don't know, maybe Ola, uh, is that something you could speak to? Definitely, uh, uh, we have people on that program and also on the MIM program. I think we have like 10 people in the pro MIM program today that have a background or, uh, in HR. And the same thing, I, I don't know exactly how many there is in people, no, managing people knowledge and change, but I, uh, I definitely know that there are people there with that background too. So much likely to the, the the formal requirements uh, state that you need 60 ECTS of business administration for for the program so you need to look at your transcript and make sure that you have at least 60 ECTS 
or the equivalent. Um, Singh, uh, Iqbal Singh is asking, what is the level of personalization and liberty at choosing uh, different subjects in, uh, or different courses? Can you create your completely, your own, can you forge your own path within your programs or are all the courses within your programs mandatory for all students and there are no elective courses? Uh, what would you like to say uh, about that, Joachim? Yeah, th that would, that would be highly program specific, I would say. So here, so, so here um, at the Department of Economics, as I said earlier, we have finance, economics, and and uh, data analytics. And there, uh, every it goes from from the one end of the of the scale. This is economics, where you can there are an awful lot of specialization and and elective courses that you that you can take to to, to basically tailor the program towards any area you like. Whereas in finance, uh, there are no elective courses at all, and the, the program is completely set. So, so it, it varies. What often, you, yeah, sorry. sorry, I'm sorry, you. Were... Yeah, oftentimes this is uh, depending on the subject field. Uh, it is um, based on past experience. This has been kind of agreed upon that this is the best thing for 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 the students, uh, and uh, yeah. Mm. Niklas, what about your program? You have two tracks already, so if you choose one or the other track, are you basically set in, in that track? Uh... Basically, there is some, but uh, limited electability. Mm. And uh, I would say that goes for most of the, the programs offered by the department's, Department of Business Administration, uh, whether it's the management people, knowledge and change, or international strategic management, or marketing programs. Uh, there is some there are some possibilities to choose courses, but uh, limited. Uh, all our programs are highly designed. Ola, do you want to add anything to to that? I, yeah, I, I agree. That you could maybe that's one or two choices you can make along the way. So, but I would say that both on the strategic management program, international strategic management program, and MIM program, I would say that we have a quite big opportunity to choose. I mean, in my program, you should choose an industry to work with, and you can choose that on your own. You should choose a management challenge to work with. You should use the scandal to work with, uh, to apply in various course contexts. Even though you all take the same course, you work with different empirical material or different industries or different settings. So there will still be opportunities to, to influence what you work with even though you have the same label on top saying this is course number, this and that. Yeah, I think the, the opportunities to select elective courses may be uh, more plentiful in a two-year master program, generally speaking, where the second year you can choose some courses according to your needs. Uh, Sandor, and, and the same theme, uh, Sandor is asking, do you think completing a one-year master program is a major disadvantage in the labor market? compared to a candidate having a two-year master program. And we have kind of talked about this a little bit before. Uh, Niklas, what, what, what's your take on this? Is, is it necessary to have a two-year master to be attractive for in the private sector, for example? I don't think so. In my experience, I would say that most people in the private sector don't know the difference between a one-year and a two-year program. <laughs> yeah, that's a... Yeah, exactly. That's also my take. You are Kim, what do you say? No, no, absolutely. <laughs> I totally agree. Yeah, it's, it definitely uh, in the yeah northern Europe uh, and particularly in Sweden, where there is a education inflation of of, of sort, where um, um, yeah you require a, a master even um, yeah for for tasks that perhaps doesn't re really require it, and uh, I would think that in many cases uh, em employers do not look all that carefully at at the actual course content of of the the, the programs that students have taken so i yeah for sure Ulla, do you want to say something about I, I agree uh, they don't know the difference and they when they took their education they didn't have this bachelor and the master's program division so they they have yeah. other their, their points of reference is from our future backwards, the system we had once before, so they don't know the difference. So I would say, no, it's more important that you tell them what you want to do. 
All right, thank you guys. So Max is asking, and this is a perfect uh, perfect question for you, Akib, I believe, regarding econometrics, how much of an increase is the difficulty between bachelor's and master's level? I mean, if a student has struggled with econometrics at, at bachelor's level, will they cope at master's level? or is it... um, Yeah, so, so uh, again, I think that this, this is quite... Um... In general, not only to, to, to the programs that we have, but also to other programs that um, just this fact that you move from the bachelor's to, to the master, there there is this pace increases quite quickly and all of a sudden you are treated as, as almost finished student rather than just started student. And so there is an awful lot of... Um, uh, things that that then fall on you and one of those things is that the level of courses are are much higher than than at the bachelor's level so, so i would say that in general uh, the the, uh, the the pace of courses and the uh, the um, how tough they are this increases uh, quite a lot and, and and this is certainly true in econometrics but uh, uh, is is true also in, in in most other areas i would think Mm. Do you want to add something there, Niklas? Because your your program, they, you have a rather strict entry requirements that they must have completed 90 CTS, the equivalent uh, of business administration. So they must have very strong foundation already when they join uh, the the masters. Is there a, a huge difference in so-called difficulty? Uh, do the students tell you, oh, it's so difficult now, I'm in masters? Yeah, a lot of students do. Uh, that's one of the more common, more common comments I get from, from students. The, the very big difference in both level of difficulty and not least in terms, terms of the pacing from the bachelor to the, uh, to the master level. There's a significant difference. Mm. Students work much more heavily, go much deeper into subjects at the master level. And I think this applies to all our programs. Mm. Ola, would you like to add something to this? I will say maybe so much on, on the specific topics, but also as, as the complication of things, because it, in, 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 in the master management program, they do a lot of much, much more things going on at the same time. And they have deadlines on the short run term and in the long term, and they should prepare for this and they are involved in different projects. So it's much more complicated. So we really try to make this look like a real management situation where you have a lot of stuff going on at the same time and they all require different parts of your brain but it, it requires that it works at full, full capacity so you have to organize your world and try to learn how to manage with things and, and I would say that is also a difference because compared to many bachelor programs where you do one thing at a time and it's well organized for you. All right thank you. Uh, we have a question from Mohanad. Is the MIM program the only one with the, that is open to non-business related backgrounds, uh, Ola? Uh, I think so, but I, I, I'm not sure if there are anyone else, but I, I don't, I think we are the only one. This is the only one. I, I think also entrepreneurship, actually. It's open to non-business graduates, as it were. So entrepreneurship and, and management. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so uh, for data analytics, we have a question, Sushmita Sengupta. I just wanted to confirm, uh, reconfirm, sorry, that for data analytics and business economics, no program specific documents such as CV or letters of recommendation are required. So past results and cutoff requirement matching are the only way to prove our merits. Mm, yep, uh, so there is no requirement on. Um letter of content um, uh, content and so on uh, so this is not required you you can of course submit any document you you want but it is not required right but for we want to emphasize that many of the other programs at the faculty of economics and management do require special documents in support of the application such as a statement of purpose and a cv uh, but not for yeah. to that, uh, could be important to point out. It's certainly not a bad idea, even though programs may not require the CV. It's a good idea to to add it. Plus, students that have studied abroad during the bachelor's, in particular, students taking a, a semester in another university, often tend to forget to include grades from those studies. 
And they often just mention them in the statement of purpose uh, without showing any documentation of it. And we're, of course, interested in all types of studies that you've been taking. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. So if in doubt, include. Yeah. <laughs> good, good advice. Uh, we have a question from Yumeng Guo. What type of course in bachelor studies helpful for applying to the International Strategic Management Program, since strategic management related program at the undergraduate level are not so common? Ulla, would you like to take that one? Uh, I would say all types of business analytical courses in terms of strategy and management control and things. Uh, I would say that is important. And, courses that are focusing on the company or the organization as analytical units. And, and I would say anything relating to that, how you could improve that by more of strategic analysis things. If it's strategy or management control or uh, various types of calculation courses, et cetera, could be a relevance, I would say. Uh, but I, in, in general, um, uh, a, a, a sort of a mixed variety of business administration, I would say, is fine. Um, uh, if you have a good background, a wide background in business admin, I, I think that is definitely definitely sufficient. Mm. We get a question quite often for students who are a bit confused if they are if they have the right number of credits uh, in because we say you need sixty credits in business administration or sixty credits in economics. What what could be included in those 60 credits of business administration? What do we consider, if you have 60 ECTS of business administration, you must have studied these things. That's it's our definition of uh, business administration. Could you present, Ola, what is your, what do Swedish students study during the first 60 or the first year of the business administration studies? I would say you have accounting, management, control, marketing, and organization, and then that's the first year, and then you add strategy and entrepreneurship, and maybe some kind of responsibility, CSR things, and my, maybe some more capital analysis things in terms of investments and, and also finance aspects of it, but I... To some extent, you you increase the, the make it more difficult on, on the second semester, but also you add more components to it. But I, I will say you you. I think it would be very difficult to say that you have a one year studies of business administration if you never see an accounting, for example. If you don't know what a balance sheet is, I would say then you have a serious disadvantage. I don't so know this what, is but I, I maybe you could add something here, Niklas. Yeah, we we are a bit liberal when it comes to actually counting credits because we know of the difficulty. Uh, it's, it's straightforward for Swedish students, uh, students from Northern Europe oftentimes, but from other countries, it may be difficult to actually figure out what we mean. But studies and, uh, well, even if it's subjects related to, as Ola said, accounting, finance, marketing, uh, organizational studies, uh, management, general management, commerce. Uh, we take a fairly wide definition of it, but it's the firm that is in various ways in focus, you could say. But we have to be a bit liberal here uh, because of the difficulties of actually defining. We cannot just count on business administration the way we perceive it. Is there a Northern European defini agreed definition of business administration, or is it a European, or is it more? Is there a global definition that we can all agree this is business administration? So, I would say no. Okay. Not that I know of. So that will, unfortunately, for students, make it more difficult to actually understand what they what what is expected of them. It, in a sense, reflects how we have decided to organize the subjects here at the university in the. We okay. have one department called business administration, including accounting, organizational studies, corporate finance, uh, management, entrepreneurship, a couple of other areas. So it's reflection of that more than anything. I see. Okay, I, well, our time is actually up because it's five past three. Uh, I would like to thank you, Ulla, Niklas and Joachim from Lund University School of Economics and Management for participating today as panelists and helping with the students' questions. Um, I hope we were able to provide some information and support to students who attended today. 
Uh, so yeah, thank you all very much. And we hope that uh, your applications to Lund University will be successful. Thank you guys. Thanks Ulla, Niklas and Joachim and Rebecca. Well, thank you. you very much. Bye bye.